Good evening, everybody, and welcome back. This is Sammy here at Sammy J Stitches, um, and it's been a little while. Uh, as Josie pointed out to me, I have not made a video since I was in my 20s, which is fun. So, um, the last video I recorded was actually the um, Jess and Marie Does Stuff Turns 5, um, her anniversary for her floss tube. I planned on vlogging the week after that and having something up before my birthday, and that didn't work out. And then um, some stuff has happened since my birthday. Nothing bad, but um, some stuff has happened since my birthday, so I haven't made it, uh, another video. It's been a few weeks. So, um, yeah. Um, so you may have noticed. I chopped all my hair off. Yep. I don't... Okay, so like... I've shaved my head before. Uh, it's been a long time since shortly before I started floss tube. It was real short when I first started floss tube. And um, I missed it. I found that if my hair was long enough to be put up, that that is all I did with it. And so with it a little bit longer, uh, or with it way shorter, um, I have no choice but to do something with it. And that's not entirely true, because it's still long enough to put into a ponytail, which I will show you here in a second. But, um, yeah, so I decided to get rid of it. Well, I was watching this one show, and I really liked how she had, like, the angled bob. So I'm like, I'm going to leave this and have it angled, and then shave all the rest of it. I mean... All of it so the lady didn't do a very good job uh, it doesn't have an, a lot of an angle it just has a little bit of one but part of my point was um, I wanted it short enough to be cool and not have to worry too much about it but long enough that I could braid it so what I can do is pull it back and what I typically do is French braid it and then put it back. But for now, I'm just going to put it up in a ponytail because I will sit here and mess with it the entire time. And it's a little bit hot in here. But the kids are asleep, so I gotta do what I gotta do. So, part of the reason that I have not recorded in a few weeks, um, first was that... Well, I mean, I kind of went completely off the grid for a few, for, unfortunately. So the reason I hadn't recorded is because I wanted to, my, my husband got me this brand new, I don't know if you could tell, there's like no shadows on me right now. And it's because my husband got me this big bright light, which I will insert pictures here. And um, it it just makes everything look so much better. So I'm like, man, now I kind of want to, uh, you know, be home and use that. So I decided to wait till the week after my birthday. And then um, uh, the week after that, we had school shopping. We had plans, which I will get into in a few minutes. Uh, just a lot of chaos. So I was... It got pushed again until this week, and um, this last week, everybody's kind of been blowing me up. Where are you? And hope everything's okay. And I know that, you know, uh, we got the big stuff with Ryan approaching imminently, and so I wanted to make sure I popped on here and uh, just let everybody know I was doing okay, in a lot of ways more than okay, and, um, you know, try and catch up, and it's going to be a minute. Because it's a lot. So, I'm going to get started. Um, that's kind of where I've been. Uh, trying to decide where I want to go next. So, oh, let's go. We're going to kind of bounce around. It's not going to be all whips, then all something, then all... I'm, I'm bouncing around. So, if you don't care much for that, you may want to skip this one and see you next time. Um... When I last recorded, because I went back and looked, um, was right before the Jessie Marie does stuff. So, um, 
so I have, and it was at the end of the month, so I was going to show you where I got to on my focus piece, piece throughout the month of July. Um, so I have that here with me, and um, then I have the Jesse Marie Does Stuff uh, set before we get into normal whips and such. So I'm going to pull those out. Okay, first, um, last month for my focus piece, it was Christmas Rules by Lizzie Kate on 32 count uh, linen, <laughs> Christmas in Williamsburg with gold uh, sparkly in there. So I believe when I started, I was somewhere in the treasure family area, I think. I might have been on fall la la. But now I am all the way down to hang mistletoe by the time I finished. So I'm doing really well. So there's 12 parts, I think, and I have one, two, three. Hold on. Let me do this a different way. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I got a pretty good bit done, and I can almost guarantee this one will be finished before Christmas. We're going to be hanging that one on the wall this year. So that was really nice for my focus finish. I have not gotten to work on it yet this month. We'll get into that here in a minute. Um, but yeah. So that's where that ended up. Then, um, in case you didn't watch the plans video, which I ended up making it from the beginning of a vlog into its own video because I totally entertained myself and I was like, this is going to entertain Jesse. Um, everything that I had had so many ways that it fit for her stitch along. And, um, so I just, I thought it was hilarious. And then when I was, um, editing, I even used like her title page, um, you know, the same background. So I did, because I thought it was funny. Um, and one of the other things I meant when I said that I've kind of jumped, dropped off the face of the earth is because I haven't even been able to really update Instagram very much. And it's because the sites that I've been at the last few weeks are, um, I mean, had like literally no service. So I couldn't even upload pictures. And then by the time I got home, I would have forgotten to upload them. And then I'm turn around and head right back to work. So um, I think I showed this one, but then I didn't show the others. So on Instagram. Excuse me. So for day one of the stitch along, it was J or JMDS. Um, and I worked on the um, Living with Charm series by Lizzie Kate. Um, one, because I started up here with the dream, and we all know Jesse's a dreamer. And. Um, there was more to it and I can't remember now, but that was, you know, there's not much about this list that doesn't describe Jesse in one way or another. <laughs> and so it's the one I picked. I didn't have anything that started with the Jade, but this reminded me of her. So I got, I'm going to have to learn how to do this okay it's washing or it's making that uh that D is a, quite a bit darker than what it looks like on the screen but that's where I got to I got most of that D done in uh some of this top border so it's um two over two on I think 36 count I don't know it's really tiny so Kind of hard to work on. Hmm, I wonder why this one doesn't have a tag. Oh well. So that's what I worked on 
for Jay, which I believe was July 30th. No, the 29th. It was uh, July 29th. So then um, for the M was, uh, I picked day two, July 30th was M for Marie. And uh, I did mini Alice in a Dolly Dream. One, because it starts with M for mini. Two, because uh, I was inspired to do this one by her because she's doing it and um, I even purchased I had her kit this one up for me it has Jesse all over it so this is where I got to oh, I got parked threads all over the place hold on so I had the top 100 block done I did that at StitchCon and I, so then I decided I was going to, with this one, because I bought the gridded fabric, I don't remember if it's Easy Counter Magic Guide, but anyway, um, I decided I wanted to try color completing a page. So this gray, I completely completed for the first page, and uh, I started on this blue color. Yeah, it's like a blue gray in there. So that's where I got to. The light's almost too much right now. <laughs> okay. So that was M. Then July 31st was D uh, for does. <laughs> and I picked Owl Dad by Brooks Books. There is a picture of what it looks like. I may end up having to turn down that light. Okay. So. I'm getting there. Okay. So this one, of course, dad starts with the letter D. So it fits for that reason. Also, um, I ended up going to the October Floss Tube Retreat in Austin. Um because I heard about it on Jesse's video and I thought Jesse was going to be there and she ended up not being, but I went anyway and this is, that's where I got this pattern was from the freebie table. I cannot talk tonight, y'all. Have to excuse me. So, <clears throat> I got most of the top of dad's head. That was all done that night. So, next is S, which was August 1st, and I worked on House of Stark. One, because Stark starts with this. Two, because Jesse Marie got me hooked on Game of Thrones. And three, had something to do with Jesse and Game of Thrones. But anyway, so. I got a lot of this, a lot of this one. So, um, let me fold it in half for a second so I can show you what I actually did, and then I'll show you the whole piece. I already had the bird done. So I worked on this piece here, all the way across here, and started on Stark. Um, wow, and you know how people talk about sometimes when you're working on something and you're also watching something or something's going on in your life that you correlate. As soon as I pulled this one out, I started thinking of the movie I was watching while I was working on it last. It was an um, apocalyptic movie on Netflix. It was crazy. It was super intense. But this is where I am. And, uh, oop, folded it too much. So I'm almost to the top on this side, and then, you know, it's rectangle, so it's going to be pretty much the same on the other side. So I really like how it's turning out. Let me figure out how to get that wolf right up in your face because it is gorgeous. I'm, I want to say this is one of the first projects I've done where I'm only using one color, and I'm 
a little surprised at how much I'm enjoying it. So I really, really am. It stitches up so fast. And the whole motifs thing, that's kind of new to me too, but I love it. So then the last day was August 2nd, the actual day of her five-year anniversary. And I forgot to separate the bottle. Um, so I decided to work on my guardians and one, because it's what I usually work on at the beginning of a month. And at this point it's August 2nd Two because, um, I got into my first mystery stitch along because of Jesse and this is just a result of that. Um, so here's where I got, I did not get caught up this month. It's the first month in which I have not done so. I knew it would happen eventually. Surprise, it took me all the way to August. Um, but I'm okay with that because we'll get into this more in a minute, but I'm really enjoying Arbitrary August, like, so much. So here's where I'm at. And so you can see August, I got... One of the colors completely done, and most of the second one, if not all of the second one, before I stopped. But you know, I had to work on a little bit of border. I had to, I was having one of those nights where I was really distracted. I don't remember why, but I was. So, there's that. This leads me to August 3rd, which is my birthday. Um, I turned 30. Um, I celebrated with my stitchy friends and um it was I was everyone was welcome and uh, several showed showed up <laughs> but I have to tell you a little bit about how this went so I decided to get on at noon and stay on until midnight uh, and then people could just kind of come and go as their schedules allowed them to stitch with us and uh almost immediately uh I had because what I did was I set up the Google Hangouts, but it also broadcasts over to YouTube. So then you could watch via YouTube and like chat like you would a live YouTube, right? And then, or you could join the Google Hangouts and you would, like whoever's talking has the main screen and then you had a bunch of windows down here with the videos of everybody else. And then when they would talk, it would swap them out. So almost immediately... I had a couple people watching and commenting and Jesse was one of them and then she and I were trying to figure out how she could get into the Google Hangout. She was texting me which was going off on my computer and being loud. It was just it was quite comical. Finally got her into the Google Hangout um, and it was just she and I for a while um, and I'm not going to go through exactly how the whole day went but so I was broadcasting live on YouTube and um, I had at this point I it was myself Jesse Marie and um, Sam from craft crafting between stitches <laughs> we were sitting there chatting and somebody else popped in well I had had a friend messaging me saying okay I want to join how do I join and she was having some complications because you have to, you know, download a plugin. You have to allow it to access your camera and your microphone. It can be a little complicated. Um, and so she was working on that. Well, when the name popped up, I knew that her boyfriend's name was Michael. So I didn't, I thought maybe she was on his account because, um, you know, if she didn't have a Gmail or access to her Gmail or that's how she got it working anyway. So, this user jumps in, doesn't say a word, we're talking for a few minutes, and finally Sam goes, so who just signed, or who, whose logo is that down there? And uh, I said, not sure, somebody popped in, and he unmuted himself, said hi, muted himself. And, um, so... We were like, okay, well, you know, we're stitching, we're just hanging out, and he's like, that's hot, which I found a little awkward. So, 
Um, and, and Jesse just completely shut down her video. She was like, I don't know this person. I don't want their video, them to see me. And Sam was looking at me like, what do we do here? So I ended up, um, removing him from the Google Hangout because he explained that basically he, um, saw like we were public and he saw it and he joined, but I didn't really understand what he was saying. So uh, I removed him from the hangout and me and the girls were kind of joking about how awkward that was and, and that it was a, a strange that, um, he would mute himself when he was not talking. And so we were discussing this and then I realized over on the YouTube live feed, he had started talking and that's where he had found us from was the link in there. And he was like, I don't know why you would make the link public if you didn't want people, just anybody in there. And um, he was seeing that we were making fun of being awkward with him. And so uh, I ended up sh shutting down the live broadcast because, um, yeah, it was really awkward. Hilarious afterwards, but very awkward. And uh, so I think in the future I will make it private so that you have to click a link. But see, the thing is, is I put the link in there for stitchy people who were looking for the hangout and it was just complicated. So that happened about halfway through. I ended up stopping the live broadcast. I think some people tried to watch it. It did post to my YouTube. Um, and some people started watching it afterwards. I did end up deleting it because of the whole very awkwardness there at the end. Um, and so we were chatting and uh, we, I was going to stop at midnight, but I didn't. I think we were on until like 3, 3.30 in the morning. Uh, so I know Sam joined Je Jesse, Megan. Um, oh, man. I'm going to miss so many. Regina. Uh, the Swery Stitcher. We had several joined by just chatting instead of actually videoing in. Uh, it, it just turned out really well. And so we really think we're going to try and continue to do these every now and again. So if this is something you'd be interested in, um, let us know. Let me know. Uh, let Stitching May know. Um, and we'll, we'll see what we can pull together. So, um... I got some birthday presents. I already showed you the the light. Um, I opened these on camera, by the way, which was kind of fun. But I'm not really good at that sort of thing. So, <laughs> I my husband also got me a microphone for doing these videos. However, it when I plug it into my laptop, it sees that it's headphones, so it doesn't work right. So, um, but like if I'm recording at work with my phone or something, this will help block out some of the noise. Um, it'll be really nice. My laptop does a really good job of that all on its own, but you know, the GoPro, it has a connection for the GoPro, uh, things like that. So he also got me two, um, connection, like brace bands. He got me two bands for my Apple watch, but, um, they're not here right now. Uh, so yeah, that's what he got me. And then I got several cards in the mail several gifts. So I'm going to go through those real quick. Um, and I'm going to post these on Instagram now that I've located them and everything I promise. I know somebody was asking if I got mine. This is one of the cards I got. It's so cute. Oh my goodness. It's cute. And this is from April Wagner and she made me a little birthday ATC. I get my own, um, wish and wish so there's that one I'm gonna put these up as soon as this video is over so and I do keep the cards I'm working on a way to add them to the memory book with all my project stuff so the next one I got was from Robin Richards and this is the card and this was the ATC that she made for me. So cute. Oh, 
Look, she says I get a wish. My daughter played a trick on me and um, made me blow out candles that constantly relit themselves. Yep. I believe it was also Robin that sent me this one. Some of these have gotten a little mixed up since I got them, you know, weeks ago. But it's there's a pattern on the back to do this. It's really cute. So, and then I got this one from Sarah Paris. And it is this. Happy birthday and all the candles. And she has the cutest way of backing her cards. That is awesome. So. That card over there. I have one more. No, that was three, right? Yeah, okay. So then I, I was working with a lady um, at work and I I was cross to Jean and we were sitting there talking and she found it really interesting well I had a couple kits in my truck so I got her started on a kit she got really interested and ordered a bunch of them and decided to give me a couple for my birthday and this one it's the dimensions kit family and this one's gotten kind of moved around because she wanted to see like she opened it up to understand it and then said oh you have this one I got it for you I'm gonna open it to get the picture it's a realist kit one of the small ones and it is it's got a little tiger isn't he cute oh my goodness I'm not usually real big on kits but I'm thinking I may have to do that it's adorable. I'm going to need a drink. Because we're already 30 minutes in. Okay. So that was all my birthday stuff. And then we get into August. So I decided to... Okay, so the way I usually plan a month. And Jessie did a little talking about this on her video today. And... Uh, she, because we did a little discussing about this yesterday, I am typically a planner, not in my life, <laughs> not at all, but in my stitchy life, I'm very much a planner. I, um, and then again, I'm not because here's what happens the first week of the month, because there's a stitch along going on that's serial killer. I put my salads at the beginning of the month, not just because of the event, but because when those new pieces come out. You know, you just want to jump on it. Um, <clears throat> and so, I have those the first week. And then the next week is, or as soon as I get, because it doesn't even take up a whole week. It's like four days. And then I work on my year of whips first, because, you know, they're your focus pieces for the year. And then anything that did not get touched the last month. Will be next and then everything else kind of comes after that now inside of that I don't have any particular order I just kind of stick the stickers on the calendar but um, so I'm a little ar arbitrary in that sense but it's still a plan and um, and I do stick to it pretty well I mean outside of like days off and things like that uh, I will Look at the calendar and it, whatever it says I'm working on that day is what I work on. So in that sense, yeah, it's very much a planner. So I originally when I thought about doing an arbitrary August because of this damn tiny decisions, and we'll get to that in a minute. Um, at first I wasn't going to participate. Then I saw this tiny spinner thingy and then I had to do it. And I was like, okay, well, you know, I'll... I already split my night in half. I get to work at six. I usually wait about an hour or so before I start stitching, sometimes longer. I work on my heaven and earth design first um, until 10. At 10, I switch to my focus piece because I can normally get my 150 stitches in by midnight. And then at midnight, I pick a piece. Or, you know, I look at my calendar and whatever the piece is for the day. 
So then I was going to split it in half and I was going to keep my schedule for the first half of the night and then the second half do arbitrary August. I was going to seriously overload myself and I was like, eh, you know what? I'll throw my plans out the window this month and just do arbitrary August after midnight. So I still got to do my, my hundred days of hate on first and then my focus piece and then I will pick something for the night. And the first couple weeks that didn't work real well either because there was a lot of nights of not stitching um, between just, just, I feel like so much has gone on and yet I have no way to say what's gone on. Like there's nothing specific. It just, there wasn't a lot of stitching done. And, it, and I think a little of that was um, tour to stitches hangover. You know, I kind of needed to give myself a little breathing room and not try and force myself to do a thousand stitches every night. Itchy. So, um, I decided to do arbitrary August. And uh, so, I'm sure you've seen this a thousand times. But there's this app called Tiny Decisions. And if I've worked on it, I remove it from the wheel which is something different than other people are doing. So I guess I'm not as arbitrary as I could be, but um, I don't want to work on the same thing twice in one month because I have too many things I want to touch. So there's that. We will spin it in a little bit. So um, I'm not doing these in any particular order, but These, these were chosen by the wheel. So, um, now this one, I got so close to finishing the page. It was so hard to put this one down when, you know, my relief showed up and I had to leave work. Because <laughs> if it hadn't been for that, I probably would have kept going. Um, so I was working on all this down here. You know, the birds are new and all the snow and stuff. Um, I literally... Have to fin it, fill in some snow here, some gray here, and then um, I'll be moving over to this side. And I think what I'm going to do is follow this along the, well, and some back stitching, of course. Follow this along all the way to the other side and then work my way up the way I worked my way down on this side. So this, that's what this looks like right now. So, yay, I'm almost exactly halfway finished with that. And because I kind of, I'm really enjoying the whole spinning the wheel thing. Even though, you know, I've random number generated in the past and my, my planning is pretty random anyway. There's something about it pulling the actual name that is so much more satisfying. I can't even begin to explain it to you. Um, so I showed you earlier my House of Stark. This is its companion piece because at the time it was buy one, get one free. And, or buy two for ten, five, what, I don't know. So here's my House of Targaryen. I didn't get a lot added to this one, um, because it was a busy night at work, but it's still cool pink. I'm loving it. So these two will go nicely together. You will notice today is August 15th, and I do not have 15 whips. I have not been work stitching every day, but yeah, it's life. I think that's the biggest thing that I've had to remind myself after the tour to stitches and everything else is I don't have to get, I don't have to stitch every night. I don't have to do a thousand stitches every night. I don't have to push myself. Um, I do that because I want to work on my pieces, but then sometimes I feel like I push myself too hard because, you know, I want to, I want to have things, excuse me, things to show y'all and, you know, et cetera and yada yada. And I've got to, I've decided I'm putting a lot less pressure on myself and we're going to talk Harry Potter in just a minute. Not Harry Potter, Stitch Watts, Harry Potter, you know. Um, this was actually last night, no, night before last. Um, 
I pulled out close to the lip eye and I completely finished this block and started on this block. But here's what it looks like overall because it is gorgeous and amazing. And one of these days I will be able to show you all this without having to wiggle so much. So I have five pieces done of nine plus that top piece on the border. Yay! I want, I want that one to be finished by the end of the year, but I don't think I could promise myself that. I just don't know. I Now, me doing this at home with the light may not be able to happen very often. I may have to go back to either vlogging or recording at work um, because I have made a pact with myself that now that the kids are back in school, I will take all call-ins for the rest of the year. Um, because we're saving money for something big. So, we're very, very excited about it. I haven't decided yet if I'm going to tell you, so have fun with that. This one was last night's, uh, last night was payday, last night was bill paying, last night was... I totally screwed up and thought I was supposed to make way more money than I did, so stitching did not go well last night. But I did get some done. This is, um, I totally forgot, Dashway Stitch Along by Caterpillar Creations, I think. Um, I got this, I got two colors finished, the light pink and that middle pink. Um, I did find an error. I'm supposed to have an extra two stitches in between, or one extra row. Let me see if I can figure out what my fingers are doing here. Right here between the A and the S, there's supposed to be another row there. But I think I'm just, I'm not pulling it all out. I'll just work around it. It's, it's two stitches. I just have to make sure I don't count from Dasher when I'm doing all the rest. Because they're spread out enough, it's not gonna... I mean, as long as I don't use it to count and get completely off, um, it's not going to really look, you're not going to notice. You're really not. Okay. Um, another piece I worked on. I feel like I'm all over the place. And then I'm, I mean, yes, okay, we're already 37 minutes in, but I feel like I'm kind of going fast. Uh, this is At Our House by Lizzie Kate. Remember, I am doing this one twice. That's why you see that. But if you'll notice, hold on. Let's see if we could do this. The color schemes are different. Um. I did this one close to called for. I did have to convert to DMC. I'm doing it close to called for because um, I feel like that's a little more classic or traditional, which the person I'm making for it is. And then mine is, uh, the one I'm making for myself is maybe highly contrasted. Uh, I've got really dark darks and really bright brights. So, but I had at our house and these guys done before I started so I finished this this brown that's the only thing that's easier about doing it on my phone is it doesn't mess me up okay this banner and all the way down so I love I love this one so I'm wondering if I gave myself too much room at that top hopefully fits okay so I worked on the one half. I didn't work on both halves yet. So it, the other half is still on the wheel. It is very much a thing. This was one I drew on the wheel, but I think I, I put very few stitches in it. This is my uh, Miss Loli Dagger Wing by Mirabilia. And I think I just put in the black stitches. So it wasn't a lot, but... You know, every stitch counts. Every stitch counts. 
I'll do some seeing when it's the stories today. I'm sorry for your ears. I was just having some fun with my daughter. Okay. Uh, oh, this was my birthday start. Why I did not pull this one to be a separate thing. So I told y'all I was going to try and do two new starts on my birthday. <clears throat> However, um, I deleted the pattern for the um, that haunted mansion stitch along that uh, everybody's working on right now. Michelle and Lolly and, you know, everybody. So, uh... I wasn't worried about it because I knew when the when the first room came out, I would get the whole pattern over again. But that didn't happen until August 8th. So I did not end up starting that one. I only started this one. So, and this is only the progress I got while sitting there stitching with everybody else that day. And I did, I had done my head, my, um, 100 days of hate you know some stitching for that at the beginning of the video and then started this so this is from my mom this is like I don't know because I also had to kit, completely kit this up because I didn't have all the threads yet I don't know I started it I worked on it did have to frog some but it's so pretty and it came along so nicely and the one thing I'm really liking about this light is you can see all the it's a very subtle modeling in this fabric, but you can see it so well. So, I just, oh my goodness, it's so pretty. So, this is Forever and Ever by um, Country Garden Samplings. And, uh, that's where... So I got all of love done and I'm starting on this flower because it's just too pretty. I thought about going over and starting on the house, but I don't know. So I'm really, oh my goodness, just hold on. Let me turn it the right way. Can you see that flower? How amazing is that flower? And you know, when you look at the pattern, it looks small, but it is not small. I think it's like 159 by 159, I think Jesse said. It's kind of out there, but, and there's going to be 12 of them. I, I'm loving it. Oops. And then the last of my whips. So that's one, two, three... Four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight out of fifteen. Not so bad. Not so bad. So this one. Not a lot of stitching, but look at that well face. Look at that. Can you see that? Hold on. Look at his face. He's so freaking adorable. That's the well from Pinocchio. This is Fairy Tale Lands one. Uh, it's just. It's so cute. So cute. Okay. It's not all my whips, but that's all my whips. Okay. All right. The next thing I have is my focus piece this month. Ooh, that's not pretty. Let's this for a second. Okay. Um, so I've done six times 150 is, I don't know. Three, nine, nine hundred stitches in this so far. Um, this is the bottom of the page, so I'm kind of working my way over. So this is the edge of the page, and then I'll come down here and start on that one. Um, but it's my focus piece. I do, I. This month I have not worked as diligently on this one. Um, Cause like I said, I really haven't been at all with any of it. So what I've been doing is I do 150 on the nights that I work on it. 
And then right now there are six or seven hundred and fifties on the chart. And I go in and I color in those hundred and fifties. And then, you know, starting, let's say tomorrow, I'll do 150 stitches. Well, then, you know, I could cross out a hundred and a fifty instead of a 150. Does that make sense? And then I'll get caught up pretty quick. The only problem is, is when um, I get to the 125s because then I've got 25 left over, but it doesn't really go anywhere. So anyway, that's all for me. So here's where I'm at. And I need to, I won't be doing any back stitching this month because back stitching gets you to your stitch count way faster. And then I feel like I'm, but I'm not getting as much stitching done. So I will save that for later. And then my 100 days of Heaven and Earth design, I, some days, it's all I could do to put two or three stitches in, you know, and then some days I get a lot done. And I'm just not stressing about it. I'd like to get the page finished by the end of the challenge. I think that's very much achievable. The last day is um, October 9th. It is, you know, August 15th. I... It's not going to be a problem, um, even with me doing slow days and fast days, because I just have this corner. Wow, I cannot manage this corner. There. So, that is how it's turning out. I will say, um, as much as I am loving this, and I am, had I known then what I know now, I would have went with a, not a mini on this project specifically. Um, you lose a lot of detail. Because, uh, did you know that's an owl? Yeah, that it is. This little blob right here, it's a fairy. And like, when you're way back there, you can kind of see it. Although he kind of looks like a vase, the little owl. Um... But I've seen the bigger ones, and you can definitely see that detail. I don't think it matters so much in, like, for example, my uh, Mini Phantom of the Masquerade. But in something like this with a lot of detail, I would have went with a bigger piece. However, because this was my first Heaven and Earth design, and I said if, I'm, if I never stitch another one, this is the one that I want. I went with the Mini because I was intimidated, and... So now here I am I'm completely fine with that. I've got plenty of other stitching, but in the future, if I am absolutely in love with the design, I will not buy the mini. So, and if it has that much detail, something you may want to think about if you are trying, or if you plan on, if you're trying to figure out which heaven and earth design you want to stitch. So that is all my stitching. It doesn't look like a lot, but it is a lot. And then again, it's not a lot. Are you rightfully confused yet? Okay, so, whoops. I do believe I will be continuing with Arbitrary August. Um, like, hashtag Arbitrary last half of 2018. Because <laughs> um, there's a few of my whips that while I love them, when they come up on my thing, I'm like, eh, but, and... This kind of gives me that, you know, even if I just put five stitches on them um, and then spin the wheel again. <laughs> but I don't know. I just like it. I like it. So let's see what I'm going to stitch on today, maybe. I'm going to try. Make, making no promises because it's the, first day, the kid's first day of school. So let's see. Um... And hold on, I gotta edit this because I worked on Dashaway. And you can kind of weight them. So, like, anything with a two by it, I didn't work on last month. So I wanted to give it a little bit better chance. And actually, Aldad, I did. So that one should be a one. Anyways. Um, and all the ones are ones that I did work on last month, so I want the ones that hadn't been touched in since 
May or June to be um, more likely to come up. So, and then of course I take them off once I work on them because I don't work on anything twice. So what are we gonna do? I'm gonna this button. Ooh, Alice in the Dolly Dream. So, <laughs> two hades to work on in a day, but that's cool. I'll put at least a strain or two in it, or I'll try tomorrow. My, my hope here is that either I will wake up before the kids get out of school and take a little time for myself before they get home and then clean, or I'll get enough cleaning done tonight that I don't have to worry about it tomorrow, or I'll click the stitch after they go to bed. So, that's why we carry August. I, I didn't screenshot that. Did I? Ugh. Oh, it's still on the screen. So. Okay. Other things. I was in a swap. A Texas Stitchers um, Facebook group swap. Um, and... I really liked the pattern that I did. Um, I thought it was creative. I made it into a little pillow and sent it to my person. Um, and then I received mine and went, I'm so sorry for the person that received mine because it is nothing compared to this one. And what's really funny is this was actually uh, my ATC for July was for her. And then I received the Texas swap from, from her. So, um, Look at this, y'all. How freaking cute is this? And she said it's her first finish like this. It is absolutely stunning. I especially love that this hat was stitched on something different and then attached. Also, that this is very patriotic. I mean, the theme was patriotic, but um, very us. But it came to me from South Korea. Um... It's just, it's adorable. I love it. Just freaking adorable. So, 2018 Texas Stitcher Smalls Exchange Stitch by Maggie. I'm going to say that Schaefer. Oh, you said the dry. Okay. So that, that's just too awesome. And then she sent gifts because she said it's got to travel so far. Now, this one my daughter wanted so bad, but I told her no because it was just too gorgeous. And it is one of these little, look at this little thing that's hanging off of it. So intricate and pretty. And then, I don't know if I'm turning it the right way. Look at how gorgeous that is. So pretty. Part of me wants to hang it up. Part of me wants to keep it stuff like it. I don't know. It's just so pretty. The wood looks really nice. You can tell this isn't like a cheap one, you know, like you buy it, get at the carnival and stuff. Um, it's, it's so nice. And that little tassel thingy. Um, so that, she said that's a traditional fan there. And then she also sent me the more modern version. So this is just a round piece of plastic. And uh, it actually does make a little bit better wind than the traditional. Not quite as pretty, but it's still cute. This one I did let my daughter play with because I'm less, I'm less concerned with it getting torn up. So, and then she sent me a little note on this nice fibrous paper so also um atcs for this month this was things that start with a and for little america very cute um i love that the america was made into the american flag And that was by Mel Sherman, or that's her Instagram name. I don't have the envelope, but 
very cute. And then this one was for the summer ATC themed. Um, and I was absolutely speechless when I got this one because I have, I, I don't really talk about it, but I have an extreme love for hummingbirds. I think they're amazing little creatures. They also remind me of my grandmother because she always had hummingbird feeders. Uh, she just absolutely adored them. And she sent me this amazingness. It is so, oh my goodness, perfect. So, and then she sent me a little, a few other things. She, she just started watching Floss Tube in January and when she got my name in the exchange, she decided to go and look me up. So she is currently trying to binge me from the beginning. More power to her. Uh, she sent me this needle minder. Life is a journey, not a destination. It's so cute. A little bit heavy, but I really like the bubbliness of the, I don't know if you can see just how bubbly it is. And then she sent me this variegated thread, variegated floss. It doesn't have a name. It doesn't have any information. It's just gorgeousness. And uh, she sent it from Canada. And then, to top it all, we have life is too important to be taken seriously. <laughs> and I want to go tubing the river so bad. It did not happen again this summer and it's killing me, but there's that. Now, I did get two things in the mail that I purchased because I'm doing monthly things. The first is the next in that Forever and Ever series. This is Merry and Bright. It's very cute. I like that little sleigh. Um, yes, very cute. I don't know if I want to do it on the same fabric or if I want something a little more Christmassy because this one looks very Christmassy to me. It may need a gold fabric too. I don't know. We'll see. And then my fabric of the month from Under the Sea Fabric is Pele's Fire. I got the 32 count Jobelin. And this thing is so pretty. And it's getting a little washed out. My, maybe I need to use this light during the day. But a little bit darker than that but that's still pretty true I mean you're getting to see all the I mean even even that it's so bright over here and darker over here it's just it's absolutely gorgeous I love it and it needs something bright and cheery on it it really does I gotta figure out what maybe me so yes amazing Okay, we're an hour in. I knew this would be a long one. Um, going forward. So, I'm going to keep with Arbitrary August. Still doing the 100 Days of Hate. Still doing a focus piece. Still crazy. Um, but I'm loving every minute of it. I'm trying to get better about commenting. And, um, oh, I did have one more thing for you. So, I will do a complete recap of my journal, stitchy journal, the way I track everything at the end of the year. But, I've had a few questions of the most important parts of my book. Now, at the beginning of the year, I went to a couple different people that create these pages for to use in a journal, and um, I bought everything. I, I put everything in the book and I've been noticing there are certain pages I use more, certain pages I really like, and some that I'm not hardly touching at all. And I'm not going over all of them. 
Um, I will do that at the end, but, or at the end of the year. But these are the ones that are my absolutely must have because um, I was asked. So my first is my monthly tracker. I list every um, one of my whips and it's actually double sided right now because of Stitch Mania. Um, the X, this little empty space I use at, at front. The X means it was worked on last month so that I have a quick glance and can tell, okay, well, I really need to work on these two because I did not work on them last month. When I'm going through and planning like that, arbitrary August, doesn't really matter, but still doing it just in case I decide to go back to my old ways. And then I color in each day that I work on something. You can see the first one is my, my uh, Heaven and Earth design that I'm focusing on. Um, Autumn Wreath is the next busier line, and then usually one day on each of the others. If they have two days, it's only because I started at like 11 and went into the next day, but typically that's not the case. Um, my yearly stitch tracker. This is how many stitches I do every day. Um, I do, because I work from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m., I do split my time between from midnight to midnight to fit on this. So like this morning while I was at work, I did 200 stitches, let's say. I think it was like 204, but anyway. And then I'll come home, I'll go to sleep, I'll go back to work. And then the stitching that I do on my focus piece and my heaven and earth design, I add all those up and then put it down here. And then at midnight, I start the next page. That's why you may have heard my alarm go off a little while ago. It's midnight, and um, it was time to do stitch count, but I have not stitched this evening except for my heaven and earth design. So, um, and then you'll see here at the bottom, I, I total up all my stitches for the month, then divide them by the number of days to see what my average is. So that's why I do that, um, just to kind of give myself a idea of how I, how my year fluctuates. Um, my other must-haves, those, those two are absolute musts, and these two are absolute musts. My first is my master list. Since I started this, um, this is, okay, so I started this year with all of these that were current, my current whips, which is why they have a check on kitted instead of an actual date, because I didn't know that when I started this and then the date they were started and then the date they're finished and then I highlight them just to kind of give my eyes a quick glance um, and then like these are kitted and started I have some here that are just kitted they're not started yet um, and I actually have a couple pages of these because every time I put a pattern in one of these things or even put the name of the pattern on it. I'm, that's me starting a kit. So I put it on my list. And that also helps me remember to go and finish kitting it. Or, you know, so I have an idea of when I go to start something new, what I've got available. Um, <clears throat> so it's an ever-evolving list. And so it's multiple pages. And it will continue to be. The next thing is, and then I have my project records in order by the master list. And it starts out, so when I first create a project record, you know, it looks like this. Just this part. And I fill it out. Chart name, the designer, the stitch count, typically I need to go back and fill that one in. What type of fabric, the count, the color, the, the who makes it, DMC, or if I, or weeds dye works or whatever, start date and the finish date. And then after it's finished, I will add the fin, the picture for the finished project. So then this will go into a different book because they just snap in and out and, um, become, you know, a memory, a, something I can go back and reference years from now, something I can enjoy looking through kind of like a scrapbook, but with all the information for that project. I did start out printing these and each time I worked on it, I would say 
how many I did on that specific day and then a running total, but I didn't stick with that. So that's not, this not vital, this very vital. So that's those. Now I have a few more that are not vital, but I really, really like. First is my countdown for um, 100 days of tape. Uh, it probably will not always look like this, but being able to mark off the days was essential for me. I, I like doing it. Um, a year at a year at glance, year at a glance starts and finishes. Um, some people do these as two separate pages. I put it both on one. Um, you can tell when Stitch Mania was because look at all those starts. Um, but this way I can just kind of look and go, ooh, well, I finished this many this month or I didn't start something this month. Um, I actually only managed that one month this year. And uh, so I just think it's really neat. This one was just me doodling and I made it so it will not look like this in the future. <laughs> but... This is my year of Whips Tracker. I thought by making it kind of like stained glass, it would, I don't know, make my eye more drawn to it. But all the colored in ones are ones that I have finished. And you can see that I've UFO'd two of them. And then I have a few more I need to focus on. So uh, I'm definitely going to get the mini treasure hunt bookshelf um, one page completed. Definitely Christmas rules. Um, the others, I'm not sure. So I'll do my best and see what happens. Again, no pressure. No pressure. Um, I feel like Gear of Whips is a good guide, a good focus on, okay, these whips are either, have been in my um, stash too long, or my whip list too long. For me, that just meant that they were from last year. Um, or, you know, or they're ones that are close to finishing and I'd like to get finished by the end of the year. It's a way to give you that focus. And sometimes when you're having a hard time choosing, go, okay, let me look at my year of whips. And those are ones I need to focus on first, but I'm not, I don't feel like you should pressure yourself to complete them all by the end of the year. Just try your best. So, and then my last one is the, um, ultimate cross stitch group, the stitch, stitch calendar. I didn't print out the one for this month. I'm uh, digitally modifying it uh, using the numbers app on my computer. But uh, so that I know my daily stitch count on my focus piece. And like I said, I'm kind of doing that different this month anyway. So I'm going to go put the, all those back up. But those are my uh, must-have sheets for my journal. If you need any more information about them, you can message me on Instagram or um, ask questions down below. Heck, you can even find me and message me on Facebook. That's fine. Okay, so future coming up. Definitely keeping with um, arbitrary August for the rest of the month. Um, and okay, so next week is Ryan's surgery. I did take the entire week off um, because I figure. If he can't eat, I don't want to be sending him to a babysitter who doesn't know how to feed him. <laughs> um, you know, it's going to be a lot of pudding and soup and stuff like that, but uh, I'll be here with him. So we're, we're driving down to San Antonio on Monday. The surgery is first thing Tuesday morning. Of course, I don't know exactly what time because they don't tell me until Monday. Um... And then they said he will have to stay overnight one night if they do the bone graft, which he really thinks they're going to have to. And then we'll come back on Wednesday. So that's that. Uh, I do plan on taking stitching with me. I think. I always, I usually do, but I usually don't get a lot of stitching done because I'm anxious. and so. One last thing. I will go ahead and tell you about it. I was trying to come up with a really quick creative way, but uh, for the last 10 years, my husband and I have considered traveling. We had a certain destination in mind, um, and every time we would get close to achieving the goal of going, we would 
overwhelm ourselves with all the stuff we wanted to try and do and then we would think about all the other places we could go and um, essentially end up arguing ourselves into not going. But that is no longer the case. Uh, because we involved a couple extra people, <laughs> my in-laws. Um, so my husband found this really, I don't know, he was intrigued by Thailand. He wanted to go. He, it was something we could afford, uh, you know, with the amount of time that he wanted to do it in, we would be able to save up enough. Like I said, I've been working a lot of extra hours and now I plan on working even more. But, uh, so, we started planning this trip for Thailand, and when, I don't know, because he does this, whenever we start talking about one thing, he starts looking up other things, and then, like I said, we usually argue ourselves into not going. Well, while we were talking about firming up details, because when he started talking about Thailand, he's like, my parents have never been out of the country. They, I really think they need to go. Can they? Can we all go together? And now he didn't want to take the kids because Thailand is a very crowded community, um, similar to Tokyo or Japan and China. And so it was just going to be the four of us. And uh, so, so then we were trying to find night details because we were we were going on this trip. And in the process, he looked up a vacation package for London, England which is that place we've been talking about going for the last 10 years. And uh, the prices, the prices were right. So uh, January 2nd through the 9th, we are going to be going to London. And I am so nervous and so excited because this is something, like I said, we've dreamed about for several years. Um, and it's just, it it's really happening. Like, the tickets and the hotel are paid for already. And then, so now we're just like saving the pennies for, you know, food and souvenirs and any extra attractions uh, that we don't already get with the London Pass. And so, uh, <laughs> I gotta tell you, my husband is super adorable because we were talking about the trip, like trying to make what, make a list of things we want to see the most and things that we could live without seeing if we didn't have enough time. And he said, uh, what you should do is you should stitch a pattern of like the London skyline or something that's to do with London and then frame it and have it behind you in your videos. And, uh, once we've gone there and then hopefully we get to continue to travel and you could do this for each of the places that you go to. So, um, that's the thing now. So, uh, my, my new year, new start will probably be Pretty Little London. Uh, out of all the ones I've seen, it's, it's my favorite. Um, I'm going to start it on New Year's and then take it with me, stitch on the plane, stitch while we're there, whatever, if I have time, if I'm not sleeping. Um, and then, you know, finish it whenever, but stitch on it while I'm there and I'm even thinking because you know the pretty little series is it's gonna fit in a hoop and a lot of people frame it that way and I think I will too but um I'm thinking I'm going to find either something I can make into a needle minder or something that I can stitch onto it as like that I buy there and attaches to it and it'll be different for every piece so really excited about that if you have any hints, tips, tricks, thoughts, um, whatever, let me know because I could always use some extra things to think about. I think that's everything. Um, I will try not to be gone so long so that my videos are not an hour and a half long <laughs> and, you know. I will, and, and my, my video next week may just be a quick pop in. It may not be, here's my whips and everything else because of Ryan's situation, um, post-surgery.
but I will definitely let y'all know how he did, how he's doing, what, whatever information I get during that situation. So, with that being said, I um, hope y'all all have a great stitchy week, um, and I will see y'all next time. Happy stitching!